A train ride to a resort becomes deadly as the construction disturbed the sleeping grounds of ancient spirits, thus puts the lives of the passengers at risk. Follow us as we begin the train ride and watch the different passengers fight for survival against the supernatural. In the forest, trees were being felled to make space for a rail track. They were warned by a so-called bearer of bad news, but they didn't heed and continued the laying of the tracks. On a particular construction day, a worker was left alone while working by his friend. He later found his friend hung up the ceiling whilst his blood flowed freely like from a fountain in New York. The railroad tunnels were built and soon became open to the indigenes and tourists going to the resort. At the Sankara resort station, a lot of activities were going on at once. As the dancers were dancing and the singer was singing, two politicians were discussing how to better the town. As this was happening, a tourist, Purnama, and her sister, Kembang, arrived at the station and went to look at the miniature replica to figure out the locations to where they were going. They discussed on the activities they would do at night while watching the fireworks. Meanwhile, outside the station fence, the wives of the workers who died during the railroad construction were staging a protest to demand their husbands from the people who built it. This caught the attention of everybody at the station including a mysterious woman who averted her gaze like she knew a secret they didn't. The visitor politician was displeased with it and told the home officer to handle it. Moments after, operatives came to carry the women from the fence and out of sight. After the scenario that happened, it was time to board the train. The big sister asked one of the workers about their seat based on their ticket type, and he answered all their questions with ease. They soon found their seats and proceeded to sit down. Soon after, the captain began the pre-ride speech. In the VIP car, the home officer was raising a toast to the visiting officer, Mr. Santoso, who then made his own toast to the success of their project and future projects too. They then posed for a picture for the papers. In the economy class, some of the passengers were having a jolly time and were singing. The mysterious woman entered the four-train car and went to her assigned seat. A Mr. Nice Guy helped her put her bag in the top shelf before going to his seat. As the big sister looked up, she saw the worker that helped her earlier smile in her direction. She thought he was smiling at her and moved to talk to him when he walked towards her. However, he walked to lock the rear train entrance and she had never felt more insulted in her entire existence. The train then blew its final horn and started its slow movement into steady rhythm. In the VIP car, some rich influencers decided to go on Instagram Live and broke shame those in economy. In another seat, a husband and wife are having an argument as the husband is about to be arrested and he's running away to another town with his wife. Meanwhile, in the economy class, the mysterious lady was staring at a picture that seemed to hold many memories. She soon saw the person in the picture and ran to meet him. However, everywhere she got to, he was not there. She asked the hostess until she began to sound like a lunatic. She then looked up and saw Mr. Santoso and moved to meet him but the hostess stopped her and offered her a cup of coffee instead. Mr. Santoso was asking the home office about the accidents that happened during construction, but he allayed his fears, although Mr. Santoso was more concerned about the investors felt than anything. As the train moved, Purnama brought out her journal to write. Her sister wanted to see what was inside, but she wouldn't let her. After a while, Kembang pouted like a dog refusing treats. She then saw a bird flying next to her window. She was fascinated but soon got scared as the bird ran into the window jolting the Purnama like a jack-in-the-box. Purnama then went to pee, leaving her sister alone. She used that opportunity to read what was in the journal. She became emotional while reading it as it was full of negative memories. Meanwhile, her big sister was vomiting in the toilet like she had morning sickness. She then cleaned up herself and stared in the mirror and she took a tissue and rested on the wall for a few seconds just as the train entered its first tunnels. In the tunnel, one of the kids awoke to the sounds of voices. In the control room, the CCTV guy noticed a door malfunctioning through the camera. He sent one of the engineers to check it out. Kembang was worried for her big sister and tried her line but it wasn't going. She then went to look for her but couldn't find her in the toilet. Meanwhile, the child that just woke up saw another child in the rear entrance. He then stood up to meet the child. As he stood by the locked door, the child on the other side performed an amazing magical trick. 
and then showed him her demon face. He was so surprised that he couldn't shout. As he moved back, he backed into someone on his way back from the toilet. The man saw the miniature demon and shouted just as the train exited the tunnel. The daughter, Kembang, was worried about her big sister Purnima, and she found her in the toilet of the second train car. She caught on to her little ruse and urged her to see a doctor once they stop at the resort. Purnima heard a noise and looked up to see that the economy train car had disappeared into the wind. She moved upwards in search of her male hostess crush and found him in the VIP car. The male hostess excused himself to meet her. She then told him about the strange occurrence. Even he couldn't believe his eyes and had to go towards the door to see whether his eyes weren't deceiving him. The host then proceeded to lock the door to prevent further entrance. However, someone wanted to use the restroom and noticed the train car missing. He then raised his voice and caused widespread panic with his non-existent sense of preservation. The hostess, however, came up with a stellar lie and told them with such acting skills that he should have won an Oscar right then and there. As the people calmed down, the idiot nerd that raised the alarm went back to the hostess and tried to find out if he was lying, but the performance continued, and even he was convinced. Purnima wanted to use the toilet again, and she told her sister to get her a drink while she did that. She got a call from Purnima's doctor, Dr. Nugroho. He told her that he called her because her big sister hadn't picked up his call all week. He then told her about the urgency of Purnima's health check. It seemed that Purnima did not tell Kembang that her surgery was unsuccessful and the cancer had spread throughout her body. Before he could deliver the full message, the line cut off and she couldn't hear the rest. Purnima came back to meet a cup of coffee and a cold sister who asked her why she didn't tell her. She was pissed that she did not tell her, but Purnima just wanted to enjoy her time with her sister. Purnima told her that she has accepted that she will die soon. She just wanted to spend the few time she had with her sister. She then had a breakdown and was crying like a child at the playground. Kembang also started crying while reassuring her that there are many treatments that they have not tried yet. Soon after, the male hostess opened the voltage box to see that the wiring was damaged and filled with sticky gel-like substance. He was jump-scared by bloody spirits looking like Michael Jackson zombie knockoffs, but he was jolted out of it by the captain and he tried to describe his nonsensical visions to a logical man. The captain told him that they can't contact the control tower while he told the captain that the fifth train car was missing. This left the captain looking like he was hypnotized. The captain then told him to arrange the people in the fourth car in an orderly manner, and that he mustn't tell Mr. Santoso about the vanishing train car. In the VIP car, the passengers were complaining that there was no mobile service, the serving hostess told them that she will check what the issue was and went to do that. As she went, the male hostess passed her side looking like he had just seen a ghost. Tekun The male hostess met with Purnima and Kembang and assured them that the detached train was the work of the maintenance crew and their luggage would be carried to the resort separately. The passengers would also catch up soon. Just then, they entered the second tunnel and he offered to boost their seats to Class 1 and give them bonus points for their next trip. In the VIP car, the sleeping passengers woke to the sound of a laughing girl while the economy class was all about Hakuna Matata. Just then, one of the singers started choking and shouting nonsensical words. It soon spread to other passengers with them shouting about punishment coming down on the passengers. The passengers were scared but the photographer had the balls to point his camera upwards where he saw the Indonesian evil Spider-Girl version hanging from the top of the train. After a few moments, the Spider-Girl revealed herself to the rest of the passengers and they all scurried for safety with the photographer being the superhero to stand for them. As the demon got control of the train car, the car detached just as they were about to come out of the tunnel. Kembang let out a loud scream and this brought the attention of Purnama and Tekun to the fact that the fourth train car has also vanished like a ghost. Kembang started crying and explaining what she saw to them. Her cries drew the attention of Mr. Santoso and the home officer who then came to check out the situation. Mr. Santoso then noticed that the last two cars were missing and he held his head in his hand like someone who just lost the lottery. The mysterious woman then channeled her inner Angela Bassett and spoke a one-liner that was iconic. With her deduction skills, she deduced that it must have being a warning 
but the home officer dismissed her words like the ramblings of a madwoman. Kem Bang tried to support her claim, but the home officer said that the madness must have been contagious for it to spread so easily. He then asked Tekun whether the conductor has contacted the control tower. He put on his acting cap and said yes. Then the home office tried to get Mr. Santoso to calm down. Instead, Mr. Santoso called Tekun to a corner and asked him to see if he can call for help and make Car 4 his priority as he doesn't want to die. Meanwhile, the home officer went back to VIP and tried to get cell service, but it was down. Soon after, some of his workers wanted him to follow them to dance, but he declined to take care of other things. After they left, the home officer went to meet the conductor to formulate a plan to save the passengers. The conductor then showed him a camera feed of everyone in the fourth car dead. However, the home officer showed his corrupt side and told him to delete it. The conductor was sceptical, but he had no choice. The home officer was only particular about the investor's well-being. Soon after, the captain came to the worker's deck and tried to get Mr. Santoso to go back to VIP. Before he left, the mysterious lady held him back and accused him of not letting her see her husband again. In the VIP section, Purnama and Kembang shared a seat while the other hostess worried about what was happening. As the mysterious lady entered the VIP train car, Purnama called Takun aside to ask what was really going on. He obliged. Meanwhile, the VIP passengers were complaining that the cabin smelt like poor people. Moments after, they entered the third tunnel and business went on as usual in the VIP cabin. They soon heard a noise and one of the hostesses was nowhere to be found. A few people and Mr. Santoso went to check and he saw a creature in the corner. As he told them to run, they all stopped in their tracks like they had glue in their shoes and were surrounded by dead spirits. They slowly inched their way forward but they were soon finished off by the spirits with Mr. Santoso's head popping like a ripe watermelon. The people in the next cabin saw all that went down and demanded an explanation. The conductor and the home officer then conspired to blame everything on Takun and the economy passengers while they escaped to the other car. The second VIP cabin was not turned against them with one of the people wielding a broken bottle as a weapon. Moments after, a fight broke out, and in the midst of the scuffle, Purnama ran the broken glass through the chest of the fugitive man like she was making her hometown delicacy. They then escaped to the next cabin, but the conductor had locked it behind him. As they entered the next tunnel, the VIPs in the last car ganged up on Takun and prevented him from entering the next cabin. As they were about to finish him off, the spirit appeared, let out a loud shriek like Celine Dion practicing her vocals and began popping heads and bodies like overripe fruits. The home officer collected the train key and went to the driver. He then ordered him to increase the speed. Before the people in the last cabin could figure it out, they were already locked in. Tekun then broke the glass and let them through. Once inside the driver's cubicle, they had a scuffle that ended with Tekun flying out the window and hitting a tree like a blast doll and dying instantly. As they shouted his name, the driver hit the emergency brake stopping the train. They then bound the home officer with his own belt. As the darkness descended, the passengers decided to walk, but they were being picked off one by one like Chinese sushi. The rest scattered into different directions, leaving Purnama and her sister who also ran into the forest. Inside the train, the spirit took its time with the home officer before unaliving him. The remaining spirits then picked off the passengers in the forest. They bound Purnama as she watched her sister get turned into a tree as she was crying. The head spirit appeared, and she pleaded to exchange her life for her sister's. The spirit didn't reply and disappeared like the avatar instead. One by one, all the tunnels started collapsing and the forest swallowed every trace of it. Thank you for embarking on this scintillating train ride with us. We hope you enjoyed every minute of it. If you're interested in similar stories, you can visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. Also turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss out on our newer videos.